Smoking with the Migos, it's just me and me and Migos. Uh. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today we have another video for you guys. So I didn't want to upload yesterday or probably tomorrow. I'm probably gonna upload this two days after. Um, I want to give my channel a little bit of a break instead of just pumping out constant content because uh, I need to wait for my bumper. My bumper is gonna be taking a few days because it's from the other side of the world, um, and I did pay about hundred dollars for shipping, so that was kind of ridiculous. But uh, the bumper as it came in, and I want to, I want to be able to have good content out in the near future. So I want to be able to pump out content then. So in the meantime. Um, I was just trying to fix up my brother's car. I was trying to see he has like this random light that's always on, which is saying like a light bulb's not working. But I checked all the front bulbs, I checked every single rear bulb, everything seems to work. So I don't understand, and even it passed headline brake inspection. So I don't understand why the light is still on. I thought there was something wrong with the computers. Basically, there's two lights on the US dash, which is one of them is the tire pressure monitoring system that usually happens to every single car that's been in an accident. It's kind of a pain to figure out what's the cause of the issue. And then the second thing on this car was the lights. But the light is really annoying because when you have a light error, it keeps flashing on your dash. It gets really, really, really annoying. So I'm going to show you guys how to read the code, identify which bulb is giving the issue, and fixing the issue. So we're going to go ahead and do that today. And um, hopefully, you know, I, I fixed one side of the car yesterday, which I fixed the other side. Um, hopefully everything's going to be cleared up. He's no longer going to have that error. And, the, and in the same video, we're going to install, hopefully my brother can find the LEDs. Um, for the doors, we install the BMW LEDs for the doors. So uh, it's gonna be a pretty good video, um, but I just want to see and show you guys that you can read codes without a code reader, um, just from inside your car. You don't even need any special tools or anything. All right, so all the bulbs. Go ahead and clean that off real quick. This is just dusty, but you can see this is just wiggling. That is not in there all the way. So you're gonna go ahead and push that in. Well, that is really hot. So that's in. Is this one wiggling? That's also wiggling. Then go ahead and push that in. That's not wiggling anymore. This one's not wiggling. This one's wiggling just a little bit. Push that in. Oh, that one just twists. So that one's good. So all these bulbs are in now. That's all you have to do. So I saw that it was kind of weak. So I went ahead and just played with it. I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. Go ahead and see if the codes are still there. All right, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and put the car in accessory again. Just like that. Go ahead and use my BC button to scroll. And we're going to go to check control checks on okay I don't really know what that means I'm gonna do that one more time I'm gonna check control okay we got inactive tire pressure and that is it so that is all we have left we cleared the fault with the light so if I go ahead and read this again hold down the BC button you're gonna see the code and that is the code so CCID 149 I'll go ahead and tell a shop this is the error I'm getting they can give me they can get back to me different information and that's how I'm gonna figure out my issue. Alright guys, so basically um, that's how you read codes. You just pretty much hold the BC button on the you know on the code on the error uh, when you go to control messages and you can read the code. So you can pretty much read any code that your car is throwing. Now this is when your car is actually throwing codes. This is not when like you're having issues with like rough idle and there is no codes on your dash. You're gonna have to wait for this code to pop up. Once you have like a service engine light, you'll be able to read the code and see why you have a service engine light because of an oil change, spark plugs. You know, it's really, really, really helpful. And uh, especially if you guys look, this is my brother's car. My brother's car doesn't have the navigation, which means like he can't actually scroll down and look through it like main. I, I can actually read the codes on my screen, which I'll show you guys in, in a, probably in this video. But on this car, he doesn't have that navigation screen. So I rely heavily on the cluster. And um, you know that you can still read the codes off your cluster, and I can still do this in my car even though I have the navigation. But it's so much easier when you have the navigation system. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do that. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys um, pretty much how you read codes on my car, and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and install the lights on my brother's doors because that's gonna be pretty sick. And like I said, guys, I cannot wait for me to do a lot more stuff with my car. Just waiting on all the parts to come in. They're coming from a really, really far distance. So uh, let's just go check out my car real quick. All right, guys. So what you wanna do is go ahead and click on the eye in the middle. Once you do that, you go to Info Sources. You go to service info, and then you can check pretty much all your maintenance. This is all stuff you can check on uh, when, you, when you don't have a navigation either. You can just check it on your gauge cluster. Um, and then you go ahead and go up, and you go to check control messages. This is where you pretty much the car reads the codes. You can clearly see it on here, and it'll tell you exactly where the fault is, like your, your rear right light, your front headlight, or, you know, airbag or whatever, seatbelt, harness, passenger, whatever. It'll show all right here. Now I know I have an error code for my PDC sensors for the rear because my bumper is missing and my PDC sensors are not plugged in. So let me show you guys what happens when I uh, put my car in reverse. So now going back to service info, you can go ahead and see that I have a PDC malfunction. Now when I click on PDC malfunction, it's gonna tell me your park distance control, that's what it is. Um, have your system checked, which is you really don't need to do that. 
You just look up what park distance control means if you guys don't know what that is, and I know what that is. That's your rear parking sensors. Mine's not plugged in, so this is why I get the air whatever put my car in reverse. So pretty much you can check it from your navigation, but it's a, it's a lot easier when you have this. But when you don't have it, you check it on a gauge cluster. Um, but anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This main this video is mainly focused for the code reading because I know that trying to read codes is really difficult if you don't have a code reader. So there's actually a way to read codes on a BMW without a code reader, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Remember to stay humble, and I'll see you guys in the next one when all my parts come in. So uh, yeah, peace out. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy. She got me saying, Yalla, huh, baby. I need you to see me. Quit with the front and then put your guard down, girl. We know you ain't easy. You know.